I'm Michael Fox, and this is the Prospector Podcast. And I'm joined today by the President and CEO of Strike Point Gold, Mike Allen. Welcome back to the podcast, Mike. Thanks, Mike. It's it's uh, it's good to be here. Yes, I'm absolutely excited to have you. You had a fantastic news release come out yesterday. Uh, you've acquired uh, a, what appears to be a really good property at uh, cents on the dollar, and I'm sure there's a, a long story that's going to go with that. But before we get into that, I want to uh, give everybody an overview of what Strike Point Gold is first. Yeah, I, I mean, Strike Point Gold were... We're looking for precious metal assets in, in tier one jurisdictions. Um, so what, as, as you alluded to, we just acquired what's called the Hercules Project. It's in uh, in Nevada's Walker Lane. Uh, we also have what's called the Cooperite Gold Project, also in the in the Walker Lane. And then we have the Porter and Willoughby Precious Metals uh, uh, projects up in the in the Golden Triangle near Stewart, BC. Uh, it's a group of of, of people. That have had successes in the in the mining industry, um, but we're dominantly focusing our, our efforts these days uh, in in Nevada and dominantly in the Walker Lane. Yeah, it's a good jurisdiction to be in. Nevada is a, a clean area, uh, but this uh, this transaction, at least uh, from an outsider looking in, came out of left field. Um, you know, how how did you guys get this property, and how did this deal get done as quick as it did? Well, I mean, this is a, an asset that I, I'd worked before. Um, I did a, a company uh, years ago, and then we merged into uh, to another another vehicle. Uh, and this project was sort of laid laid dormant for for a few years. This is this is Hercules, and, and when we we had it, we we liked it a, a lot. And then there was an opportunity to to scale up, and that and that when that company that we that we merged into. Um, it's distressed, and there, there's no other way to describe it. And that's sort of been my my model over the years: is is find companies that are distressed and pick out assets. Um, I did that with a uh, with an asset in, in Nevada called um, called Hasbrook. I did that uh, when I created Northern Empire. We acquired the uh, the Sterling asset from Imperial Metals, and then this this time we were able to to pluck out out the Hercules Gold project out of a, a distressed company. And it was essentially cents on the dollar on, of what we had done with it before, and so it's a, it was a really interesting deal, and it was quick because I'd already been there, I knew it, and knew the the due diligence. Yeah, it was uh, you know it went from um, being where it is to all of a sudden it's taken over, and and as a, as you say, cents on the dollars. Uh, they've done they had, there had been quite a bit of work done on this project already. Yep. And you would think they would have gotten, you know, a lot more credit for it, but you know, we're supposed to buy low. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is the trick, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I mean, when I had this project, we put forty holes into it, and, and some of the headline holes were actually some some pretty spectacular grades, eighty nine meters of 0.65 grams per ton gold with a twelve and a half grams per ton silver, starting at twenty seven meters down the hole. There's a another one. Uh, 30.48 meters, 100 feet right on the nose, 1.63 gold and 18 gram or 18.27 grams per ton silver. So I mean, these are these for Nevada. These are big numbers. And, and what I liked about the project is the scale of it. It's a it's an immense project. It's over uh, 1,300 claims, 100 square kilometers, uh, and it sh covers off. I think it was. I think it's five named and drilled showings, another 10 showings that have got geochem, geology, and geophysics done. And then we did a, a big uh, airborne survey back in the in the day. And there's about another 45 uh, targets that were identified by geophysics that we never got to put boots on the ground. So it is immense. It is district scale. And I think that that's what investors and and particularly, you know, when you're looking at at an exit, you're going to want to be going for, you know, somebody big to come in and be able to have a project that they can uh, they can wrap their their hands around. I mean, that's what's worked for for me in the past. So, given the work that's been uh, been done on the project already, what what do we know about the project, and what work needs yet to be done to uh, get an idea of of how big this project could actually become? Well, when when I had it before, we we thought that it had the potential to be a, a generational mine, 
And, and so when I say a generational mine, that, that means that, you know, the parent goes and, and works at the, at the mine, you know, mom or mom or dad working in the, in the mine. And then the kid come, comes along and is working there. It's, it's the potential that that's, that's the sort of skill that, that we're, that we're looking for here. In terms of, of, of what it is, it's uh, it is a you know a low sulfidation epithermal Nevada. It looks like it's a, a bulk tonnage uh, scenario with with some potential uh, high grade knots to it. Um, there was an intercept. Just looking at here, at six meters down the down the hole, uh, there was three meters of just a uh, five point five uh, grams per ton and an ounce and a half of of silver. So it can do pretty big numbers for for Nevada so it's a it's a very interesting project and as I said lots to lots to, to look at we've got to get our our hands uh wrapped around the the data since I left this project there were new targets that were generated so I've my next step after uh after um, Beaver Creek is to get to site and under you know, sit with the geos and understand the new targets and start a, a prioritization for drilling. And how soon do you think you can be drilling on that property? Well, it's it's interesting because this is actually a, a really interesting point about this is it comes with three permits. There is a, a permit what's called a plan of operation, and and I refer to those as the as the big boy permits. They take about two years to get. This project has one of them already for the northern half of the project. And then there's two notices in the south. But to, to directly answer your question, this project is relatively far north for Nevada and relatively high. So it does get snow. And we get we we get into situations where you can work year round, but it's expensive. So if if we're just doing a, a, a go in there early stage exploration program, you can probably get something done before US Thanksgiving. If not, it's going to be March uh, of next year. But once we get our, our our teeth into this thing and start a resource delineation drill program, we can go year round because there'll be multiple rigs and all the equipment, and you can fight with the fight the snow at that point in time. So the initial stages will be a lot of data crunching and uh, you know paper napkins and numbers. Pretty pretty much that that's it it right now. I mean it is. Uh, it, it was a, you know, a sort of a big bite for uh, for strike point to, to take on and, and I mean you always want to make sure you've given every drill hole that you're proposing the right amount of, of thought so that you've you know if you if you hit you know why you hit and if you miss then you, you've closed off one you know then you know why you missed it as well so there's work to, to be done to prepare before we get out and drill yes now you mentioned that you have another property on the Walker uh lane um concrete uh is there any similarities between this new project that you've acquired and the project that you already have um there, you've done a lot are, of work on that project as well yeah there are a lot of similarities between uh between hercules and, and cuprate cuprate it's a caldera margin the stonewall mountain caldera and at what we saw back in the day on on the Hercules is it was also a caldera margin play. This play is is starting to heat up in in Nevada. These caldera margins, um, silicon, the new Anglo gold, silicon merlin, the Anglo gold discovery is probably the the headline for this sort of discovery. They're both low sulfidation epithermal. They're both big land package district district scale exploration targets. And so I think that those are the things that that we're going to be looking for as you know, mid tiers and seniors start to to look around for additional assets. They're going to want to see these assets that have got scale to them, and therefore they can come in, make an investment, and be able to grow their their business as as a potential exit for straight point shareholders. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's definite. A lot of the other areas have been pretty heavily explored, so you know. For virgin territory is always a uh, always a good thing, but you need a lot of drills to uh, to get to uh, to that uh, to that stage. And it's good for you to have two similar projects because you can learn. In my mind, you can learn from one project from the other. Um, you know, very similar to a lawyer looking for precedent. Yeah, absolutely, they they are they are similar in their in their structure. The ring structure phenomenon is kind of interesting because you have to 
imagine slicing through a, an onion and you've got the rings and you're trying to hit one of those rings. If you draw a straight line to hit the rings, like when I cut a cut an onion out, you only get part of it. You have to curve around to to see all the all the structure. So that that knowledge guides your your drilling on both uh, both projects. Yeah, it'll make uh, make exploration a lot easier going forward. Absolutely, and we've got a, a great team down in in Nevada, um, guys that have been doing this for for probably longer than I've been uh, been alive, and uh, you know, they're they're really good at getting these things uh, dialed in and, and uh, drill tested efficiently. Yeah. Now at Capri, you uh, you'd had some drilling uh, that was done early on. Uh, you learned a few things. Uh, are the drills going to turn again here in the fall, or uh, what, what are we looking at there? Well, you crunched the data on the new project. So actually, we're still crunching data on on the old project. Um, what we're doing here is a we're just wrapping up a clay alteration study and a lithogeochem study, and that we'll be able to publish the results on, on that in the in the the coming weeks. Um, in terms of, of of drilling, we've got to get ourselves organized, look at budget priorities. There is in there is a follow-up program that is warranted at, at Cooperite. It's not every day that you go into a, a, a place that's never been drilled and, and punch down you know, five holes and come back with a, with significant gold in four of them. Cooperite's a, a, a big alteration system. It's a, it's a massive footprint. We've proven that there, there's gold in it. All the geos, the Nevada guys that I, I've talked to have said, you know, you, you prove that there's gold in the system. Now you just need to find the sweet spot. So that's what we're going to be vectoring in on with the litho geochem and, and clay alteration. Perfect. I look forward to uh, seeing results there and and the new project. Uh, lots of work ahead of you and uh, it's exciting times for the company. Thank you very much, Mike. If uh, people want to continue to follow the uh, strike point story, how do they do so, Mike? Yeah, the website is uh, is straightpointgold.com. Uh, we are out, out there on the on the various uh, social media. LinkedIn is probably our, our most uh, active. Um, I, I, either that, or you can uh, can drop me an email. We can find my uh, my address on the on the website. Yeah, and uh, one thing I can guarantee is Mike is very good at answering his emails. He's pretty prompt as long as he's not in the bush. So. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, uh, thanks for joining me, and I look forward to uh, watching this story uh, unfold. All right. Sounds good, Mike. We'll, we'll be talking to you soon. The Prospector News Podcast is for educational purposes only. The opinions expressed are those of the participants and are not to be taken as investment advice. Listeners need to do their own due diligence and seek advice of a licensed investment advisor.